have questions. Elijah here. Um, I actually kind of piggybacking off of some of the things that you were saying. Mm -hmm. I was curious. I think you kind of answered it, but more of an entertainment aspect or the educational aspect and maybe when was that shift for you um or how do you see that fit um with being a clown is it all entertainment and fun or are you trying to focus a lot on the educational piece as well i love how you did that because that sets it up to um i had a, a brother um i think he's over at Multnomah county and uh, that's royal harris and he gave me the perfect thing and he took two words and he put education educator and entertaining and he called me an agitator agitator and so i mean um it's not very often i get to see myself but that's where i like to kind of meet and i noticed that i was already playing those out at birthday parties because um when in the past when i did birthday parties i would bring that cultural relevance speaking to auntie um stevie wonder playing you know for a birthday song um, and just really understanding the cultural vibe and using every opportunity in those birthday parties to um, when the folks needed a minute to kind of get together. And sometimes you have those lows in the birthday party. I would have children sitting down, read, they wanted to hear stories. And it was so weird to me. Like, I'm like, out of everything that I have in here in this bag, you just want to hear my stories. And so I realized, um, but most importantly, when I had that shift, um, there is in the clown season or any entertainer, um, any child entertainer, you have a dip. And that dip usually happens um, around, um, it can kind of come and go, but I know in the spring in Portland, because it rains, there's always that dip around my birthday, around March. And so for my birthday, I decided that I would give back to the community and I would do like a week or a month of free story time and I would reach out to every uh, local black owned early childhood center or daycare. I started off with five, 15, 25. And before I know, knew it, I had that historically black bookstore and coffee shop reflections just packed out for folks to come. They were coming in school buses just to come see me and we would combine music and books and the teachers would say to me we can't get a better field trip than this mm -hmm. and um i started to sell local books from that so black um writers would come and bring me their books and so that's when i went aha <laughs> i'm on to something but i couldn't really figure out how to sell that um but you know I just kept doing it and by doing offering that for a year um that's when it it just it clicked with people that that's how they want to get the message that's how we learn we learn through music repeat and um and just having a good time so that's when i moved to okay no more birthday parties um festivals i will still always do juneteenth good in the hood those are my hearts yeah um, so good question who has the next question oh. thank you nikki we got more <laughs> um, yes, yes. okay hi I'll, I'll go next um so my question for you is what has been your fondest memory as a clown i'm sure you have a lot oh my but. gosh um my fondest memory oh my gosh i have so many um Oh, I have, I have tried over the years um, to compress them. Um, but one of the one of the things that really uh, hits home for me at, just off the top of my head um, is when I realized that I wasn't constricted to Portland, and that um, being a little black girl in Portland, and I almost felt invisible. And I felt like I didn't really have this black girl thing down. Uh, <laughs> and I really felt disconnected from our history and really felt like I couldn't be a role model to anyone else is when um, I was sought out by um, Minister Farrakhan's wife, Mother Khadijah. And a lot of folks don't talk about the women 
and the children, and regardless of what your faith is, but the fact being is there's an annual Black celebration that happens every year in February. And everybody talks about the Million Man March, um, which is different than what I'm talking about that happens in February, but you all are familiar with the Million Man March. So that's Louis Farrakhan. So then you have the other thing that happens. They have an annual festival in February. Um, and there's a children's village. And boy, you're talking about talented black babies coming and playing their violins. They do karate. They do ballet. And they wanted me to host. Mother Khadijah saw fit that I was the perfect example to lead that. And not only with that um, memory, it's kind of like a collective, is that I also taught another young woman who is now, she's a member of the Nation of Islam, but she also is a clown and she serves on that region. So I no longer really go to that festival, but I went a few years and it just broke, it just um, almost broke me to tears and I get tear dyed because there are black children that come from all over the world. So I met children from all over. And so meeting, um, Minister Farrakhan's wife, Mother Khadijah, who has a, a heart for children and being able to be a part of their uh, beautiful talent show. And that's called Savior's Day. Nice. Um, uh, tell the exact dates. Uh, Sorry, Lavella. Uh, um, well, it changes. It's around the 26th, I believe. So it's of- that weekend, you know, it's like a whole weekend. And of course, since everything is virtual, I don't know, we haven't had, they haven't had it in a while, um, but it's just, it's so cool. So uh, I'll have to share those pictures again on my Facebook, but um, a lot of folks don't know that, but that's a small little history. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, you know, our, our uh, history leaders like um, Coretta Scott King, you know, a lot of times the women are, you don't, we really don't get to talk about those moments in the children of our faith leaders and what such. Yeah, right. Yes. Lavella. Um, you already answered the question, but (laughs) (laughs) it was, when did you become a clown and like, why, what inspired you? Oh yeah. So, um, again, um, I started in 2011 uh, my aunt, um, my late aunt, unfortunately, um, she's passed on, but her name is Doris Rush, so I say her name. Um, she was a beautiful spirit who headed up, she used to work for Wells Fargo, so some of us who know about Juneteenth Orient, it was sponsored by Wells Fargo, and it probably still is, but that's not the point. <laughs> my auntie was in there, and um, she remembered uh, about 17 years ago, actually to this day, because I remember the first, first birthday party I did, I had a raggedy pink wig. Now don't ask me why I already had a pink wig up in there. I was back in Lil' Kim days, don't worry about that. (laughs) I had a short pink wig like this, and my girlfriend, she had a little baby, Uh, I think she was about one or two years old, and the clown no showed. it was a brother I was supposed to be there, and he couldn't make it. Um, and she was crying, oh, my party's gonna be destroyed. And I said, listen, I got you. So I showed up and um, it was wonderful. And I ended up, I remember that I had to be at grandma's house at the block party in Northeast Portland uh, for the block party for the family. And I thought I would change, but you know, a block party, you don't just pull up. You have to pull, you have to, you're parked out. So as I was walking to grandma's house, thinking I just changed, the children of the block hit me up. I was back there on Mallory and they were like, clown, clown, clown. Um, I didn't launch the, the, my husband back then, or well, I guess I don't really have a husband. <laughs> but anyway, the situation, my family didn't really support me back then starting years ago. But Aunt Doris did remember that. And she thought that that, that clown character that she gave me the opportunity. She said, can you bring that same energy specifically to Juneteenth? So for a long time, I was only annually for Juneteenth, but people would bug me. And so that was 2011. She had remembered some work that I had did years prior. I mean, one little gig. Um, But so then from that point on, I, so Juneteenth comes and then the weekend next is uh, Good in the Hood. 
And so I would show up, nobody uninvited. I would show up and I'd run in there and dance around and then run back out. And so I would hear all around town, people would say, did y'all see that crazy lady that was dancing? She was having a good time. And so eventually I got invited um, to Good in the Hood. So for a long time, I was only uh, festivals. But the deal is, is that when I wasn't a clown, a lot of folks don't know this, but I actually worked for, I had a government job and part of my job was disseminating information to our community. And I don't know about you, but you go to a festival, a black festival, and you trying to sign people up for social services. They used to clown me. Nobody would come to my table. And my job depended on it because it was, um, it was grant. It was granted. So the numbers, they would, you know, if I didn't have enough numbers. So I started to um, com um, add that to my job. So I would ask my boss, can I show up at these festivals as the clown? So I ended up getting paid originally and not really necessarily paid, you know, any other way through my government job. And I would hand out stickers, free lunch in the park and things like that. And then I was like, wait a minute. So after a while, five years of working for the government, I ended up thinking I didn't want them to own this. So I quit in the leap of faith and went forward and started my own business. And um, with that, this is um, back here, if you can see this, um, I started selling these lunch pails. Um, these are stainless steel lunch pails that were made by a local um, graphic designer, Soapbox Theory, um, was a black woman. Um, that owns this business and she made these boxes for me and I sold them anywhere from 30 to a hundred dollars for those who wanted to sponsor um, my thing so I didn't have a grant I didn't have a loan and that's how I, I started my business and then I started doing birthday parties wow um, <laughs> so after that I'm I'm gonna go next um, okay. with that beginning with that like rough start like how i guess it's twofold like what would you say some of your biggest obstacles were and then you know you overcoming them how would you like how would you describe yourself overcoming those obstacles like you know those tough obstacles that you had to deal with yes <laughs> it was rough oh it was rough well i had to keep my government job um for a long time and i would just only do the festivals and i would do a little church gigs and then I started to do birthday parties on the weekend. And the um, problem was when I got to work, after a while I started to make the same, I would make in the weekend what I made all week. <laughs> I wasn't very well paid at my government job. <laughs> Despite what anybody else said, I still was a card holder of an EBT card and I was living on section eight. So I kind of mathematically figured it out. But you know, to anybody who wants to start a business, it's okay if you still work. But when I, when I started to come to work and I started to do the math and I was like, my boss noticed that it's hard to take a business call on the 15 minute break. <laughs> it's hard to post on social media when you're supposed to be running the front desk and replacing other people's EBT cards. And so um, I got called in my boss's office and she said, I really don't see your light. Well, I had given all my light to the to to the black babies <laughs> over the weekend. So when I came back on Monday, Tuesday, I was done. I was done. I, I didn't have no more light to give. Um, and so, you know, it just got it just became to a point to where um, my boss, you know, she she didn't write me up, but she let me know that I really wasn't performing up to par. And I just went home on the weekend and I came back and I told her I'm going to put in my two week notice. And um, I'm going to start this clown business, and I went on and on, and she didn't say nothing, and I said, everything okay, and she said, I wish you could take me with you, that sounds wonderful, and she said, I really wish that some of them caseworkers back here, now y'all know some of them caseworkers that need to quit them jobs, okay, <laughs> this said, okay, and she said, I wish some people would just, you know, accept that, I, and she said, you can always come back. Now, I don't want to give everything to her because I called my dad and I would call him every week down in Alabama and tell him. And he said, don't call me back until you become the clown. And I was like, but dad, he was like, uh-uh, don't call me. I love my dad. My dad sold one of my costumes. My dad and I are close. 
so that was one of the hardest that was one of the hardest things was letting go of that that stable income and trusting and believe that black community would support me um and so that first week uh when i didn't get up and go to work on monday <laughs> that was kind of rough um but i want to um if i hadn't said it before i want to use this platform to thank each and every black family that welcomed me to their home and uh for those birthday parties uh i just love you guys i appreciate y'all um, and one of the things, um, Isaiah, so I wanted to answer you um, is how I got through that is um, I had faith in our black families. Um, I have yet to be hired by a white family. Um, not to put them on spot, but unless they had a black child, I, so I was solely being um, funded by black fathers in particular. I was really impressed. We have some phenomenal black fathers in Portland, Oregon. Um, and they like to tip. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Um, so I had to, I had to let folks know some of the other challenges were that a lot of people thought that I worked for free and I still have some of that challenges, um, because I, I actually enjoy it. I probably would do it for free, <laughs> but, um, that was one of the challenges was, you know, letting folks know, uh, and I love black folks. I had to let folks know, um, how you have a clown over clowns don't drink beer <laughs> on the job and so I had some funny funny challenges uh black folks sometimes we don't like to start on time um and but you know what um I was patient I was loving and uh and I didn't put them on blast we had a good time and so I still do I still find it funny that when I showed up and I had to put the decorations up <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of lessons to be learned, but those were the major challenges is trying to get folks to understand that you do need to pay me, you do need to maybe make a deposit. And, um, and some of the folks who didn't really take me seriously, uh, you know, because when you have, um, when the world uh, fully Nicki Minaj's and Kim's, um, it's really hard to have uh, the adults um, not taint the imagination of the black baby. Um, with what we have going on. And so a lot of people would call me, you know, call me some of the other stars names and all that jazz. And I just had to just tune that out and say, okay, I'm going to show you. And I just kept doing it over and over again. And um, I didn't let go of my vision. Um, so I think one of the things, the biggest things that solidified me was, uh, was this going with the putting my face on a sticker, putting my face on a lunch bill, a backpack, um, cups. And so for some reason, I don't know if you become that, then the babies was like, oh yeah, yeah you real now. <laughs> you started marketing yourself. Yeah, branding. That's what it is. Like, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. She became a brand. Yeah, that's what I had to brand myself. Right. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Know all about that. Um, so you are a professional clown, like an official clown. You were in the Portland Rose Festival, right? Yeah, absolutely. Can you um, talk about that a little, your experience? Oh, yes. Um, so um, I won um, Entertainer of the Year and also won um, Clown of the Year. And um, one of the problems, um, going back to Isaiah, one of the issues I didn't, um, that I struggled with is I really didn't know how to put on clown makeup and I really didn't understand YouTube. So I don't remember if YouTube was around, um, 2011, when did YouTube come out? So I don't know. I didn't know how to work it. It doesn't matter if it was around or not. Um, so I did not YouTube. I did not Google. Um, but I tried out for the Rose Festival clown. I saw, I looked it up and I just put in clowns and I knew that I wanted to be in the the larger mainstream uh, parades, because I had only been in the black parades and that was fine. Um, but then I found out that there were a clown corporation. So I tried out, I got in, it was myself and another sister. She did not, uh, Miss Crystal did not continue on with her clowning. It was just a bucket list. And a lot of the clowns that go on with Rose Festival, it's more of a bucket list for them versus me who I was like, okay, I wanna be a clown. Um, so I tried out in 2013, and that's when I got my certification, and then I went on to learn how to do my makeup. See, it doesn't, it doesn't come off, because um, baby, the makeup I had last, when I first started, that wet and wild, I was down at the local Walgreens, I was tore up. 
but I made it work. Now don't even play with me. I made that work and they had the nerve to tell me in clown school, they, get, they went over the list of colors that clowns don't do. And when he got to green, I said, hmm, watch me. I'm about right. to slay this green. Right. And, but they said that because that's on non-melanated skin. Green don't look good. We can rock any of these colors. Mm -hmm. And so I had my green wig, because you had to bring your own stuff. So I had my green palette. I had my green hair in there. And he was going on and on about, they, green hair was fine, but they was talking about, you know, shades and all that. And I was just like, whatever. So I did my own thing. But that wet and wild, every time I did a birthday party or did a parade, it would, it, it, it you sweat it off. This is stage makeup. And you all, you guys know about stage makeup. So pretty much I have on stage makeup, you know, this right here is the same that you all would use. Because you all, you know. Yes. Y'all yes. know about stage makeup. So pretty right. much I'm on stage makeup. I was out there wearing, y'all let your girl be out there with that Maybelline and that wet <laughs> wild. And that just, just wet. makeup, yes. Right, you cannot yes. do that. So I learned how to do that. Um, I almost didn't pass clown school, y'all. Because they were teaching us um, very, they were not culturally specific gigs and acts and bits. And I was like, I can't do that. That's not funny. That's not funny. Um, but I did, but it was fun. It was challenging doing those parades. They're much longer parades. And I would dance and they played European circus music. And I was like, Okay, I just tuned it out and I played Al Green in my head. Um, this is before I had an iPhone. So I didn't have a sophisticated to play my own music. I didn't have like Dre beats or anything. So I started dancing and my, my professor, the clown prince asked me, what are you dancing to? Because clearly you're not dancing to what I'm playing. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm giving the people what I think I wanna see. When I see a clown go by, I wanna see you getting it. And that's what I was doing. And so the couple years went by and he started to put that uh, happy in, for real. He said, I got something for you. And so luckily for me, I finally got the notoriety and I started to, so the only one person, the prince, the clown prince, he rides on the parade, I mean, on the float. Wow. The rest of us have to walk. And so people would do unicycles. I don't do no unicycle. They juggle. I definitely don't juggle. Um, the one man that does the crash and all that doctor and then some some people just now look i'm not clowning the clown but that's not me i don't i don't want to come i know y'all be out there waiting in the rain you be out there waiting in the heat or whatever it is you don't want to see somebody just so i come by and i get it um and so he put that on but baby who that i don't know if i want to hear that happy song no more <laughs> Because he would play it over and over again. Because, you know, each time it's a different crowd. Uh, I won't be long with it, but I got to tell y'all, um, right before the parade, the day before I, I had got hired at uh, Clark College, and I was out there, and it had rained a little bit. And so I was still out there playing around, and I slipped, and I sprung my ankle. And I had to be in a crate the next day. And my ankle was not looking good. But I took some Tylenol PMs. I forgot what I was thinking about. I took some Tylenol PMs before the parade. Now, if you're ever in a parade, you know it's a waiting time before the parade. Trying to stay awake. <laughs> but I still did four and a half miles on two Tylenol PMs on a crooked leg. Oof. Anyways, but I love my Rose Festival, folks. We get together annually. Um, it is a wonderful thing, but there are still a need for more Black clowns. Um, but I have not, I don't really hang out with them too often. My focus um, is now really Juneteenth and uh, Good in the Hood. And matter of fact, Good in the Hood is a Rose Festival sanctioned parade now. So right. technically I still, you know. Are yeah. a part of it in that way. Yeah. yeah I think that's more fitting for me. The um, last question before we have you read. Okay. Um, what would you say to someone who wants to be a clown to a, a little brown girl or boy <laughs> who wants to be a clown i would have to say um be unapologetically black be yourself um and i was also um go with the advice that was given to me actually by a white 
a formal clown. I do not know his name. He, he came to me and he said, um, kid, don't go to clown school. You have it and be yourself. So be yourself. Um, even though I went to the clown um, Rose Festival, it's not really a clown school. It's more of a workshop and it just preps you to go to, um, to the parades for them. But if you have an idea and how you want to be your clown, um, be that then, because there is no really no specific way. And the way the, the historically um, context of clowning is from a European standard. So if you're studying that, you may go that way. So if you feel like you want to do that, knock yourself out. But if you really want to go the brown clown way, um, I really recommend that you just be un apologetically black, um, do your history and use every opportunity when you t come in contact with a black child to teach them anything. I'm talking about anything that's of relevance of our history because they will suck it right up. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Indeed. Thank you. Um, this is right up our alley, of course, because I mean, you know, we're we work with kids all the time. So, whoop. So yeah. <laughs> okay, what are you reading to us today? What am I reading? Well, you know what? Last time I saw y'all, it was um, I'm going back to the baseball because I know everybody didn't get to see it. I know. Um, yes. And I just am so in love with the Negro League. Um, I'm going to do H's for home run, but before I get into this, I want to give a shout out to our elders, um, the black women that came before me and you and everybody else. They play for the Indianapolis Clowns. That's why I had the jersey on. Okay. Um, I have a number 44. I don't know who 44 was, but uh, shout out to Obama. Uh, <laughs> um, but anyways, um, so those ladies were, um, let's see, Tony Stone. Um, Mamie Peanut Johnson and Connie Moore Morgan. Oh goodness, Connie Morgan. They all played for the Indianapolis um, Negro League uh, baseball uh, clowns, and so that was. I wanted. To, I wear this in honor of them. They paved the way. They were the only black women out there, so that was dope. So, other than that, because uh, you know I love Jackie Robinson, but come on, now we we gotta do better. <laughs> we gotta do better. We got to do better. So um, here we go. H is for home run. <laughs> Let's get into it. Um, this is a baseball alphabet story. I want to keep it light, easy, and simple. Uh, so let's do our alphabet, y'all. Let's see. Uh, H is for home run. Check that out. <laughs> let's see. What is A for? Oh, you know. I can't wait till they start taking my autograph. A is, um, oh no, A is for all stars. <laughs> Baseball acrobats, aces, and who throws and catches and hits. I still say it's for autograph. They're going to get my autograph one day. <laughs> uh, B is for the best Babe Ruth. Okay. There he is. Uh, B is for Babe Ruth, the New York Yankees. Great and uh, who batted balls towards the bleachers. And then he was kind of underrated. Uh, C is for clutch. And D is for diamonds. Diamonds is for the best friend. No, it's the diamond. <laughs> and E is for era. Uh, it's okay to apologize every now and then, but E is for era. A field's oops and a mistake. Oops, he dropped the ball and that's okay. Sometimes that happens. And then F is for fly balls. Fly like an eagle. Oh, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, let's see. And then G is for the grand slams. Hit it right on up out the park. There you go. You got the right idea, Elijah. H is for home plate and hitting homers. Wow. Yes, holy cow, I hit a home run. Look at that. And then I is for iron horse. And this is uh, Lou Gehrig. And J, oh, there's our guy. There he is. That's for Jackie. Jackie Robinson, 
who stood for what was right, to judge on someone's talent, not if they were black or white. Yeah, he really showed up. You see, he has that B. He was, that, the Dodgers used to be in Brooklyn instead of LA like they are now. Um, K is for kids. Like uh, some, I hope some kids are watching today. Kids play Little League. And L, here we go, it's for Little League. I played in Interstate Little League. Um, L is for local Little Leaguers lacing up their shoes. It's letting yourself love the game, whether you win or lose. Shout out to my friends over at uh, Friends of Baseball who gave me this book. I just thought about that. And then M is for manager. Oh, he's stressed. His team is going to lose. And then N is for national pastime. But I'm going to switch it up. N is for Negro League. You can do that. You see how I did that? <laughs> And then O is for opening day. This is, I love going to opening day down to LA. And then P is for play. Oh yeah, get in there and play. And then Q, oh, what are they gonna do with Q? Q is when a, when a base runner moves at quick pace, quietly, he has a guest stealing second base. And then R is for run, of course. So you can run. And where are we at? S can be for stitch ball, playing on the streets. Y'all remember getting inside before the street lights and balls? <laughs> uh, did I say T? T is for T-ball. I never played T-ball. Look at this. And you is for the umpire. You're out of here. And V is for the visiting team. That's for the visiting team. And W is for Wrigley Field. Who's on Wrigley Field? Oh, this is in Chicago. It's the Chicago Cubs. That's where I saw Mother Khadijah Farrakhan. And then X. It's for Malcolm X. Oh, no, I got sidetracked. <laughs> uh, this is for X. Um, this is for the Expos. And the team from Montreal. This is a Canadian league. You know, they have brothers in the Canadian league. They have black men in the Canadian league. And they show out. They're really good. And then Y is for the pitcher. Why can I see? Oh, CY. I do not know this man. Um, and then Z is for the zeros. Look at all those zeros. It's for all the zeros, a rare feat with a name. No hits, no runs, no errors is a perfect game. Oh, goodness. I went to a game like that. <laughs> I went to a Dodger game and they, I was up there all to about midnight and nobody was scoring. It was just horrible. I was it tied up? I don't remember. It was last year. Uh, but I hope that you all are able to go to a game. And uh, big shout out again to our friends at baseball who donated um, and kind of sponsored um, our last Black History Festival uh, story time because they gave, um, not only did they give me books uh, for my, my own personal collection that I used for the story time, but they also donated books to um, the, if y'all didn't get a chance to go, but Geneva's when it was open. Oh, wow. yeah, they had a small library in there. So a little nugget. Nice. So, uh, that, yeah, so I made sure that some of the local salons had books, but I gave them, they gave me two sets. So I gave them a backpack full of uh, books. I don't know where those books are, but the fact being that they were God enjoyed at the Black Barbershop. Uh, thank you guys. That was so good. I want to tell you guys, uh, before we go, if, if I may, um, that's not really how I do my story time. If you've really been to my story time, you know I have music. Yes. Um, but you're not going to get true. Me. Music and movement. And we, and showed we was like getting up and dancing. All yeah, that. Like the kids moving around. Right. I this got some was, 
Got yeah, see. you got to see it. This was a sample. So y'all come and see me um, in October, Multnomah County Library, and uh, I got the book. I got the goods, y'all. Oh, hey, hey. I, I recognize that book. Next month on October 17th, I am, it's going to be Black Poet Day. I believe it's Black Poetry Day. And um, he's a poet. This is Montreal Chillin, the poet. A local, to, local um, author. Local Black artist. And uh, he has the mascot. And so I'm going to share this book. And we're going to have music. And we're going to show out online. So you have to register. You have to register. So each month, I'm going to come with a different story. So we're going to do October. It's going to be chillin'. November, I don't know what I'm going to do for November, but uh, December, we're going to do Kwanzaa, mm -hmm. and uh, January, you know, we'll do, we'll do Martin Luther King. But, right, uh, right. Y'all let me know what y'all want to do in October, I mean, uh, November. We can definitely put that link, we'll put that link in the, um, in the comment section, if you give us that link. Um, oh, absolutely. Nikki, so that people can go and register. Sure. Um, and it then also... Great. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me, um, Nikki Brown Clown, on Facebook, Nikki Brown Clown. Um, actually, all across the board, Facebook, Instagram, um, or you can put in PDX Brown Clown. Because sometimes, you know, the social media, that's the shortcut. So mm -hmm. PDX Brown Clown, or just Nikki Brown Clown. Or if you just want to follow me with some of my chronicles, and we just have a good time on my personal page, I'm just Nikki Brown, and uh, that's where we feature my little friend back here. Uh, here he is. I have all kind of toys. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> this is uh, Kenyatta. <laughs> right. Kenyatta. So we cut up um, and have a good time on my personal page. But I'd love to see you all if you just want to get to the facts, my story times, and any of the um, other things that I'm doing around town, follow me on Twitter, um, it's Nikki Brown Clown, Instagram, Nikki Brown Clown, and uh, Facebook. And yeah, so we have four months um, that are sponsored by Multnomah County Library that we're gonna have a good time, and we'll have the music then. Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, you could have brought music, we could have danced it out on the, you know, on our Yeah, website. I just wasn't sure if Facebook was gonna cut up with me though. I, I didn't know. I you didn't know. know they acting up about the rights. That's you know what I'm saying? They show they show out on on it because I, I really don't know if they was gonna show up. So I didn't really want us to be striked because it was a good conversation. But I really want them to come back and see me. Um, yes, Lucy. on October in October <laughs> next yeah. month, October 17th. Yes. Okay. Well, we are. That's it. We're not gonna. That's it. Okay. Me keep you any longer again this is uh shine a light sunday this was with nikki brown clown we'll be doing this every sunday oh. we'll be uh shining a light on somebody from the pacific northwest and mm -hmm. um and we'll also be gifting them something to go towards their what what they're doing wow. uh, them to keep going so um if you if you have someone in mind, those of you who are listening, or if you are a local business and you would like to be on Shine a Light, hit us up. Maybe it could be you. Maybe it could yes, be you. Could be. You never know. Uh, message us. <laughs> yes, I can't All wait right. to see who you have on there. Thank you. Thank you. So much, World Stage. I love you guys. I'll see you. Love next you time. too. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.